Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. And today I'm here with episode five of my new wig wearer series. We are five episodes in. I believe this is going to be seven episodes, but I'll be honest, every now and then I get an idea of something that I think I should add. My goal is to try to do these episodes in a progression that a wig wearer would go through, somebody who's thinking about wearing wigs, and help you step by step in the process. So episode five is all about what to do when you get the wig. So we've talked about different types of caps and different types of hair fibers, and we've talked about some of the challenges with these things and with color and all of those things. We've talked about uh, safe uh, and trustworthy places to purchase wigs and we've talked about how to measure your head so you have an idea of what whether you're an average cap size or a petite cap size we've covered a lot of ground so far and now we've reached to the point where you have all the information and you've placed your order and now you have a wig and what the heck do you do? Last episode I did show you how to put a wig on your head uh, so you're prepared when you get your wig how to put it on your head but I think as important as knowing how to do that is is how to decide whether or not you're going to actually keep the wig. What do you do when you first get the wig to decide if the wig is for you? So if that is something you could use some help with, then stick around for the rest of this video because it's gonna be all about the unboxing and what you do when you first get a wig. All right, so let's dive right into that. So I have a few different wigs to show you because I think what you do to a wig out of the box is going to vary depending on the style of the wig. And so I'm going to tell you what your initial steps will be. And then if once you decide to keep the wig, what are some things you can try in order to help you get the wig looking its best? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna talk about the unboxing. And I actually happen to have a brand new wig to unbox. It literally just came five minutes ago. I had already like gotten all my materials up here when I heard the delivery. My dogs heard the delivery. <laughs> and I went and looked out the window and lo and behold, I had a new wig. So I'm super excited to show this to you. I have not even opened it. So a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I, in these videos, I am not as concerned about the lighting as I am in a video that I do when I'm actually reviewing a wig. So right now I am just in my bathroom with just my bathroom lighting. I have no extra lighting on me. I do think this lighting is really good. I mean, it's very bright. It's that sort of bright white, but I don't necessarily know if color is going to come across perfectly on this or not. Well, honestly, it never comes across perfectly. I mean, it's just kind of hard to do unless you're a professional outfit with thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment and lighting. But so when you see these wigs, uh, know that you're going to want to actually go to the actual review to make sure you're seeing the color in um, some a little bit of a better lighting setup. But so. The other is I never, whenever I do a wig review, I always tack on and out of the box at the end of the video if, if it's a brand new wig and, wasn't, and I didn't get it from a wig sister. But I always put them on first because I just want to know, okay, what am I seeing? And so I can talk about that in a, in a kind of an efficient manner with you versus having seen it for the first time. I have not unboxed this one yet. So I'm gonna go from the very beginning. So you get your wig, you get it out of the box, and now you have to unbox it. Something to be very careful of. If you're not sure if you're going to be keeping the wig, you must make sure that the conditions you're unboxing it in are very good. You don't want it around any type of smoke or smells. So I wouldn't unbox a wig in the kitchen while you're like, frying fr fish or something, you know what I mean? Or, you know, run out to the garage to show your husband while he's out there smoking a cigar, for example, you know, little things, but just keep that in mind. You're gonna want to make sure you keep this as fresh as possible. So this, uh, the netting is sticking here, so I gotta set this down. So this wig actually happens to be Lachlan, the new Lachlan uh, that Aesthetica just launched. Wig Studio One sent this one to me so I could review it. 
Um, so I know I'm not returning it. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that, but I'm going to talk with you as if I didn't know I was going to keep it or return it. So first of all, you take it out of the box, you take the netting off of it, you take the, the packing out of it, and then you start to assess the wig. You don't want to take the tag off of it um, because once you've done that, you can't return it. And you don't want to do too much to it either because if it looks like the part's been changed or anything's been significantly disturbed, then your return might get rejected as well if you do decide to return it. So when I get a wig out of the box, my very first thing I, I well, of course I just, I'm so excited to see the style and the color. But if I'm assessing this wig about whether or not I'm gonna keep it, I'm looking for any, first of all, I'm looking for, um, well, I guess first of all, is the color right for me? That's the easiest thing for you to be able to see right out of the, out of the box. And if you're new to this, you still are trying to figure color out. Color is really challenging. So I'm gonna look at the color and I'm gonna say, yes, you know, I like this color or, oh gosh, I, this didn't look like what I saw in all the videos I watched. And so if you know right away, the color is not right for you, then you, one kind of piece is already down. You know you're gonna return it because the color's not right for you. So now be extra careful. I still think you should assess it for style and for fit because you, this is all education. You're learning something from every step of this process, every wig you buy. I don't care if you buy 10 and you return 10. Every one of those should have taught you something. So you wanna look at that as an opportunity to learn as well. So you're gonna look at it. Now you might like the style, but not the color. So you're really gonna determine, do I like the style enough to return this and reorder it in a different color? The other thing I'm looking at is do I see any uh, p potential flaws or um, you know defaults in the wig? Defaults, that's not the word. Faults, I'm, I'm not catching the word in my brain right now, but you know what I mean. Something's wrong with it. It's a manufactured defect, that's the word. I knew if I just talked enough, the word would come to me. So what are some defects you're gonna be looking for? Well, if it has a lace front, then you're gonna be looking for any fraying on the lace front. Just make sure the lace front is nice and solid and intact. Uh, you're gonna be looking for, you know, just anything that could be wrong with the wefting. You want to make sure that if it has, you know, a mono part or a mono top, that it's not super sparse on top. You know, things like that can happen in the manufacturing process. Maybe a machine missed a weft or the person who was hand tying in the wig wasn't paying full attention and missed some parts. I have gotten a wig in the past that had a huge bald spot in the top. It was clearly defective. Um, so you're looking for those kinds of things because if there's any defects in the cap, then you definitely wanna make sure you're returning it and that you're notifying. Um, okay, so you looked at the cap, you're like, okay, you know, things look fairly good. You know, I don't see any defects here. I'm not concerned about any of that. Now you're gonna wanna try it on. And I recommend that you try Try a wig on with a uh, wig cap um, just for sanitary reasons if you think you might be returning it. And I did show wig caps in my last video. Sometimes manufacturers will send a wig cap in the box. Aesthetica doesn't. Um, so if you've gotten any in the past, even if you don't wear wig caps, I'd hang on to at least one just so you have something for these try-ons. Now I know I'm not returning it, so I'm not going to put a wig cap on. Now, usually a you, uh, wig coming out of the box is not, um, it, it's not gonna look its best. That's often the case. You know, a, a wig could have box hair, which means it's just smashed down or one side smashed down and the other side's not. And so, because you don't know how long a wig has lived in the box. So that is something to keep in mind that you're not necessarily gonna love it out of the box. That's what we're gonna talk about throughout this video. Um, so you're gonna put it on and, well, Lachlan is long. <laughs> Uh, very, very long, but very pretty. So um, I, I will be reviewing Lachlan, so don't worry about that. Um, but you're gonna put it on, and now you're gonna start assessing 
the things that I'm looking for to make sure to determine if I'm going to keep it. First of all, how does the cap fit? Is it comfortable? Is it too tight? Is it too large? What's going on with the cap? You know, you're, you're so definitely you're assessing that. Um, Aesthetica caps fit me pretty well. They tend to run a little big sometimes, although the last couple I haven't really noticed that, but um, I know that Aesthetica caps fit me, but if you don't, then that's one of the things you're assessing. You know, are the ear tabs in a comfortable place? Do they come down? too low? Are they too high? You know, sometimes if you have a smaller head, ear caps may cover your ears. There's a fix to that. You can sh make a cap smaller very easily, which I will do in a Tip Tuesday. But for now, you know, those are the things. You're looking, do I like the style? So you're looking in the mirror and you're going, okay, you know, is the length right for me? Is the, is the, is it, does it have enough or too much permatease. Sometimes people don't want any and they want flat. Sometimes people want more poof than a wig has. And so you're trying to assess that. Um, there are things that are hard to fix um, when you start to customize a wig that you're really trying to assess. And so, you know, length, is it too long, too short, you know, all of those things. So that's one of the major things you're doing. And even if this particular, I'm going to continue to say this because I do think it's a common thing that new wig wearers overlook. Even if you don't love it, what can you learn from it? What can you learn about the type of fibers? What can you learn about the amount of permatees and how it works for you? What can you learn about, um, you know, the lace front for the color? You know, for example, if this is a rooted color or a dark color and the lace front is knotty, which it isn't on this one because first of all, Aesthetica makes good lace fronts, but this is a fairly light color, so you've got no dark knots. All of those things, because that's gonna help you for the future. And I highly encourage you to take a picture of yourself, a selfie, in every single wig that you get because you will want that picture later to help remind you of how the wig looked on you, what you thought about the wig. Um, if you decide to send it back because you didn't like the color and then later you're like, you see another wig in the same color or by another manufacturer and you can't remember did I, did I like that color or didn't I? You can go back and look at the picture. I also highly encourage you to take notes. Um, keep a notebook if you're old school, create an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheets or whatever it is that you're comfortable using and document everything. Document the wigs that you have purchased. Notes about what you liked about the style, what you didn't like about the style. Um, everything. How did the cap fit you? Because then in the future, when you go buy an Aesthetica wig and you're not sure, you can't quite remember how do, how do Aesthetica wigs fit me? You can go back and look at your notes. Caution on that though. And I talked about it in my last video. There is a lot of variation in wigs and in how wig caps fit and all of those things. And the variations are in um, within even the same brand, you know, I always pick on Noriko because to me it's kind of the biggest, biggest offender of this it, that in my experience is their wig cap sizing has so much variability. And I know this because I've, I've tried on probably five Jacksons at this point and some of them have been way too tight for me. I couldn't comfortably wear them and at least one was perfectly comfortable. So there is variation. So you, you should still note it. But just know that if you've only tried one Aesthetica wig, I wouldn't judge the whole brand based on that one wig. But those notes are going to be really helpful. Okay, so you've done all that and you've assessed all that and you are thinking, hmm, I, this could work for me. I just don't know. I mean, it's the style isn't quite working for me right now. Is it box hair? Let me give you another example. This one looked awesome out of the box. Um, it's a new brand. It's a brand new style. I mean, this is like hot off the press. So it's not really going to have bad box hair. And I will tell you, wigs like this that are long, straight, with no permatease, and Lachlan doesn't have any permatease. 
Um, they don't tend to have really bad box hair. It's the wigs with a lot of permatease, the curly and wavy pieces that you tend to see they need a little bit more intervention to make them look good. So Lachlan looked awesome. The only thing I would do with Lachlan is I'd comb her out. I might, you know, just try to fluff her up a little bit, but I wouldn't even really shake this one a lot because she's so long. I don't want to get her all tangly. Really looks good out of the box. But let me give you another example. Let me pull out, I have a um, Henry Margu Jewels, and Jewels is one of my favorite wigs, and this one is one that I still have to review the color. I have to do a color spotlight on this one. And so she has been living in her box for a really, really long time. And so let's put her on, and I'm not going to shake her. I think I probably shook her out once before, um, and I did get this one from a wig sister, so I was never going to do an out of the box on this one anyway. But my guess is she's going to have bad box hair from just, you know, a variety of reasons. So, and I'm right. She doesn't look great. Jules is super adorable and has all these fun curls, but she isn't a great wig out of the box. I, I suspect a lot of jewels get returned because people don't know how to deal with box hair. So you put it on and you look at it and you say, ugh. Yeah, this didn't look like the way it looked on Denise when I saw her in her video. And so um, no panicking. We're just going to go through sort of the steps. You know, the first thing you're going to do, again, you're going to just assess the cap, make sure she's in good condition, there's no defects. And then remember, you do anything from here on out and you really can't return it. But with you can't really assess until you do some shaking and some fluffing. And so it is going to be hard in the beginning. And I highly, highly, highly encourage you. If you have loved everything about a style, you're just not sure if that's box hair that can be fully fixed. I really encourage you to try at some point. You're just going to have to bite the bullet and try. You're going to have to do some things, shake them out, spray them with water. And then if they still don't work, you should be able, if it's a popular style like Jules, you should be able to resell it. Not for what you paid likely. Nobody wants to buy from the secondary market full price, uh, but you still could get a, quite a bit of your money back by doing that. So it, I just have to put that in there, you guys. There's nothing better you can do for yourself than start doing these things. But if you return every wig you get because it has box hair and you don't want to deal with it, you're going to be very limited in the kinds of wigs that you're actually going to get to keep. So, um, or just buy used all the time, like not even used, like from the secondary market from a wig sister, uh, that they've already done all this and maybe they've solved it for you. But anyway, let's do this. So we're going to shake her out. This is a, re is a requirement for every, almost every wig. Lachlan, again, an exception, super long, super straight wigs probably don't need to be shaken out, but anything above shoulder length, I think can benefit from some tosses and some shaking. You cannot hurt a wig by shaking it out. Um, a long wig, again, I say this in so many videos, there are exceptions to every rule. My husband always has to remind me there's outliers to everything. And so when I say you won't hurt a wig, now Lachlan, I probably wouldn't hurt Lachlan by shaking her like crazy, but I'm gonna cause some tangling that's gonna be a pain to deal with. So just keep that in mind. But anything above shoulders, especially curly and wavy wigs, shake away. So you're gonna shake it out, and now Jules has kind of a lot of permatease. So you also want to sort of wake that permatease up. So I like to take my fingers and just get in there at the cap and start kind of scratch, scratching, but not like, it's hard to describe. It's more like just sort of vibrating in there. I don't want to, you know, pull the fibers out of the cap. I don't want to um, ruin any cap features. Now, uh, we've only got a lace front here on jewels she doesn't have any amount of filament so i don't really have to worry about hurting up in the crown area so i'm really just trying to wake up these fibers you know fluffing you can take your wide tooth comb and you can just sort of get in there as well and go against the grain so against how the fibers want to lay because you're trying to wake up that permatease you're trying to separate the fibers lift it off the cap uh, and all of that so then you can put her back on 
And so we definitely woke her up. She is, you know, now she's got some volume and some body. Don't worry. That's, that doesn't have to stay either. It's a process. You know, wig wearing is a process. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, you have to have a little bit of a tolerance for, for customizing. I would say, you know, it's in that way, it's different than, you know, buying a shirt off the rack or something. But I mean, look at how much better she looks. You guys, this is, I love that when this happens because it really is a good example of how just getting in there and fluffing and shaking and waking up that permatease, what a difference that can make. It's, just, it's so significant. Now, the next step, let's just say you're like, okay, better. Yeah, we're getting there. So a couple of other things you can try. And what I usually do with curly wigs is I almost always spray them with water just to, um, I, I like to see kind of how curly the curls can get. And so I just keep a spray bottle of water. You can get a spray bottle from the dollar store or you can get one of these fancy glass bottles. Um, I happened to buy it because I was going to try to make some uh, cleaning products. Um, and you can just use tap water if you want to. I use distilled water and the reason I do that is I started to notice tap water started to smell funny after a little while sitting in the bottle. I don't know what it was, but um, I don't, you know, I don't use this that much. And so the water would sit there for a while. And so distilled water doesn't ever get a bad smell to it. So I, I do use distilled. I don't know that it really matters if you don't mind the smell of the, your tap water. And so now you can either spray it a little bit while it's on your head and scrunch it up. It depends on sort of what your goal is right now and do you need to wear it right now? Like get out of the house with it on? Or another option is to, I always do this hanging upside down, but you would hang your wig upside down. I just put my fingers through the wefting to hold on to it. And then you start spraying the wig. I typically do it in my shower so I don't get water all over the bathroom. And so you would spray it and then you would, whoops, I almost dropped that bottle, scrunch it, scrunch the curl if you get it soaking wet. So another option, if, if, if I get a wig and it has super bad box hair, like almost to the point where I'm not even sure I can revive it, I will soak it in a sink full of cold water. I will just fill my bathroom sink up with cold water and I will submerge the whole thing and I won't put anything else in, just the water. And then when it's done, it's almost like when you're washing it, which is another future video here in the series, is you know, then you kind of squeeze out the excess water. Now, if you've sprayed it down so much or submerged it where it's dripping wet, then I recommend you dry it some a little bit. So a couple of options that you have, oh no, I grabbed my washcloth. Let me grab another one here. Unless of course my children stole all my washcloths, which apparently they did. So pretend this is a washcloth. Now if you had soaked it, you're going to want a towel so that you can wrap it up. You just basically wrap it up in the towel and squeeze so that you're soaking up some of that extra water. But if you just sprayed it and so it's dripping still, what I would do is I would hang it upside down by the tag. So I use a laundry clip, a, a little hook uh, that can be used for laundry, and I would clip it and then hook it over my shower rod and my, my um, curtain rod. And then I would take the washcloth, the reason I say a washcloth, it's a little bit easier than a big towel. And then I would just squeeze and scrunch the curls to squeeze a little bit of that excess water that's going to be dripping. And the reason I do that is the is because I want to know how curly the wig can be. And so if it's dripping a lot of water, the gravity from that water and the weight of the water is actually straightening up those curls a little bit. It's not a permanent straightening because it's not heat, but it's not helping me achieve what I'm trying to achieve. So that's what I do. And then once, you know, every now and then I might come and I might scrunch it a little bit more. But then when I've done that, then I can know kind of what I'm working with. And then I can see, do I like that amount of curl or do I want to relax the curl? And the way that you can relax the curl on a curly piece is by combing through. So I don't like to comb my curly wigs 
Sometimes I will. It depends on the curl pattern. Um, wigs with big giant barrel curls that look very fully formed and almost appear as though you just took the curling iron off or maybe the hot roller and then left it. Those tend to need some combing. Wigs like this will do better with generally with finger combing, but that's on, that's my personal preference. But you can relax the curl a little bit by finger combing or combing through. And you can see that I'm, I'm doing that right now and how she's kind of turning into more of a wave and a little more relaxed. And if you, and then you can still spray it with water and still scrunch and you'll be able to get that curl back uh, typically. The more you comb a curly wig though, the less curly it will be over time. You will eventually relax it so that you'll never really get that curl fully back. So be careful with how much you comb through curly wigs. And curls like this don't tend to frizz either. So um, the more curly, the more tight the curls are, the longer the hair fibers, you might get some frizz going on. But um, that's more on the caring for your wig part of this series. This is just for the out of the box. So. What have we talked about so far? We've talked about being careful not to do anything with the wig until you know you're going to keep it. But going into it with reasonable expectations that wigs often need a lot of help out of the box. They don't look great out of the box a lot of the time because of box hair and because you know they've been compacted in that box. Really a lot of it depends on the length of the wig, the curly or not curly, and how much permatease it has. But shaking it, fluffing it, spraying it with water. Um, I'm not an advocate of washing your wigs uh, fresh out of the box. I just don't think, first of all, the more you wash a wig, the shorter its life is gonna be. And so mm -hmm. I just try to wash my wigs as little as possible. I know some people though, always wash their wigs when they first get them. That is what they are most comfortable with. So you can absolutely wash your wig when you first get it. If it has a funny smell, any of those things. If it's really shiny, uh, which, you know, Jules, I don't believe this blonde is really shiny. Lachlan is, has just got healthy hair shine, but sometimes wigs will look really shiny. You can try dry shampoo or those other things, but at the end of the day, you can also wash it, which might help. Okay, so I'm gonna show you another wig here. I have got Finn by Aesthetica. So this Finn, I also still have to review. I, I love Finn and I've got a couple of reviews of Finn out there and I wanted to try Finn in this color and I haven't shown it yet. But, so this Finn is an example of one that probably needs the curls combed out. So this is not fresh out of the box. I actually did, I was almost gonna film this review a while back, and so I had already tried to spray her down and get her to look good, and had done some of those interventions. She had some pretty bad box hair, um, and then I didn't get to it, so now she's been living in the box. But this is an example of one where I think you can shake her out vigorously. It's not too long and you know, try to wake up the permatease. Finn does have a good amount of permatease. So you're gonna do all the same stuff. You know, you're gonna shake, you're gonna get in there with your fingers into the permatease and really kind of mess around with it and wake it up. Um, and then you can put it back on. So, you know, with something like Finn, you're gonna try to decide before you do all that, do I like the curl pattern on this fin. Curl pattern can vary on wigs. So I, you know, this one is quite curly, but I've seen people who've gotten fin and it was more wavy. So if you get one that the curl pattern isn't what you expected, maybe you don't want to keep that particular fin. Um, can I deal with the volume of hair? Fin has a lot of hair. It is high volume and has lots and lots of permatease up here. So um, that's something else that you're gonna put it on before you do anything and say, even if I got Finn looking her best, in my opinion, would I wear it? Can I wear this much hair? Can I wear this much poof? And so, you know, those are the things you're going to be assessing before you have to do anything. And then if you say yes to those things, then you can start doing all of these different things that I'm talking about. So hopefully this was helpful. Please know that in all of my wig reviews, 
if it's a brand new wig that I get, I always do an out of the box on the end. And I do try to talk about all of this to reinforce this learning for you. Uh, and then tell you, so later, you know, early, I always do the review part first. And so at that point, I, I, I tell you what I did to the wig. And the only things I would ever do are the things I'm showing you here. I would never thin a wig or trim a wig or put tons of product in a wig prior to reviewing because that's really not fair to you guys to see something that I've already modified. But I have done some of these basic things, shaking them out, but I tack the out of the box on so you know exactly what I had to work with. And I know all of the other reviewers that are like, they've got a good following and they have lots of videos. I None of them um, modify their wigs. It can be hard to believe, even for me sometimes, because sometimes they, they get them looking so good. But really just a little bit of intervention like this is frequently all that's needed. So let me know if you have questions. Let me know if I didn't explain something well enough or if I seem to have missed something. But it really is just about trying to determine if you can deal with the wig, the basics of the wig, and then deciding to keep and say, I'll work with it. It's another reason why I do Tip Tuesdays and I'm doing so much more education for you guys because I know how hard wig wearing is and it is rare that a wig is perfect out of the box for every person who buys it. The bangs might be too long. There might be too much heavy hair in the front and it needs thinning. The lace front might be not quite, you know, blending into your skin tone or like Aesthetica wigs. I find their lace fronts to be a little long and they are noticeable to me on me and so i trim almost all of my aesthetic lace fronts i have a tip tuesday on that and i want to share that education with you so i can help you get to the point where it's easier for you to be a wig wearer and it's easier for you to make decisions about keeping a wig because you have skills that will help you make the wig your own you know one of the things you assess in a wig is the part you know do what does does this mono part for example look good to me. A lot of wigs come with the mono part too densely knotted and you can barely see it. Thin doesn't have a mono part. Thin just has a, a lace front. And so you can pluck, you can pluck a part very easily. And I have a tip Tuesday on that. So just keep in mind that there are some things you can easily fix. I don't believe they should be part of your decision making and whether or not to keep a wig because you just limit yourself too much that way. Look at some of the basics, you know, a wig that's way too poofy for you is going to be hard to thin enough uh, without maybe over thinning. So maybe that is one that is a deal breaker for you. But if it's just slightly too poofy for you, you can probably then thin it um, eat, to get it where you need it to be. All right, everybody. I think that's it. I do actually have one other wig I grabbed because I didn't know Lachlan was going to be on my doorstep and it was a straight wig. So I might as well just show it to you because I just don't think sometimes if you're hungry for this, there's not enough in the world that somebody can show you. You just want it all. So this one is Christy by John Renault. No, I'm sorry, Kristen. Kristen. And um, Kristen is a straight bob that has a lot of permatease up here, which is why I grabbed her. Um, because something that you, I know people who love straight bobs, you know, you're, you might have seen this one on someone and loved it, but then you get it and you're like, oh gosh. So there's a big bump of permatease right here. Not so much over here, but really a lot of permatease. What that does is that gives her a lot of fullness on the side that she kind of parts over to. And gives her a lot of lift. So you get Kristen and maybe you're used to a Kai by Renee Paris, which is super flat, no permatees at all. Or maybe you're used to um, Bellissima or one of the Bell Trust Bobs. Again, they don't have a lot of permatees and they're fairly flat on top. So it might be a bit of a shock for you if you get a Kristen that has a ton of permatease. So before you do anything to Kristen, you have to decide, can I deal with this poof? That is something that's really gonna be hard for you to, to do an intervention on. Um, you, you can't, if, if permatease is what's giving you too much poof and hair, you really can't thin out permatease. And Kristen has what I would consider a moderate hair density. 
So you could thinner a little bit, but you're not gonna reduce this poof a whole lot through thinning. You might make it so it's not so heavy in the front if that's what you're struggling with, but not with the poof. So that is something that you just have to be aware of if this big pillowy permatease isn't working for you, then this probably isn't the style for you. Kristen's probably not gonna come with too bad a box hair because she is straight, but this kind of might be the culprit. So how do you know if it's a, just the bad style or if it's box hair? Well, I would almost always assume a little bit of box hair, but I would just say that the more permatease, the more likely it's box hair and it needs to be woken up. And you can't do that until you decide to keep it. So that makes it challenging. But again, I just wanted to give you another wig example. So hopefully this was helpful and you guys learned something new. Again, give me feedback. And if, you know, if, if I get some feedback that I totally missed the mark on something in this video, then I'll make sure to do a tip Tuesday to address that as well. But hopefully this gives you some courage that when you get wigs out of the box, you can make them work. You can get there. You just have to know what the deal breakers are for you and then know that there's a lot of things you can do to modify, to intervene that aren't super hard and to make it perfect for you. And then you can just go from there. Thanks so much for watching you guys. And I hope you'll be around for my next episode. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. My goal is to do wig reviews, education, share my journey. I mean, I've got tons of buzzing videos because uh, I'm a wig sister who just loves, I don't know, I just feel so blessed that I was not only able to discover wigs at a time when I was literally, didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, my hair loss had progressed so much. It's hard to tell when my hair is buzzed this short, but trust me, it's really bad. And I'm blessed to have met all you guys and my wig sisters and this is a community where we are there to support each other and so I just hope you'll stick around for more videos and give me some suggestions if there's something that you're looking for. Alright guys, I gotta let you go. This is long enough. I'll talk to you soon.